Hello. Hello everyone. Hello again, and we are here for episode number 23 of this Amiga 68000 programming series. Um, to be fair, it's Amiga hardware programming series. Based on the book of Fabio Cucci, uh, known as Randy of Remgem. Okay, so I'm, I have his permission to stream uh, his book. Um, so let's start. I assume you're seeing the, my, my, the book. So the Amiga can provide three types of collision detection, okay? Uh, sprite to sprites, sprites to playfield, and playfield between playfield, okay? Remember, it's dual playfield, so you can detect collision detection between two playfields. This paragraph explains that there are two registers, basically, uh, CLX dot and CLX con. Uh, DFF, uh, they are uh, here. They are okay. Where I'm using the, the pointer, um, the mouse pointer, DFF OOE and DFF 098. DFF uh, OOE is read, uh, is read only, okay, and it tells you what collision, um, what type of collision happened when you read the register. Okay, the other one is the, a control reg register where you enable certain things related to uh, collision detection. Now, this is not in the book, and I, uh, I'm just going to say it from a personal experience, okay? Uh, so, there might be somebody that tells me that I'm wrong, but this is how I experienced it. When you read the FFOOE, okay? If you read it more than once in one frame, okay, it can give you wrong info, okay? Normally, once you read it, it gets cleared. But 
it doesn't happen always immediately okay so i would wait for one frame to read it again um i'm i'm just saying what i found myself and what i actually then remembered also but it's one of those things uh, the hardware manual says it gets cleared uh not to say fabio fabio says the same thing but the hardware manual says it's gets cleared. but i think it gets cleared every frame um or at least that's more what i concluded um myself so i would be careful when uh, um reading again clx dot Each bit in CLX that is assigned to a particular type of collision, except one bit which is not used, which is bit 15, okay? If a bit is one, then it means there was a collision b between something, okay? Then you have to do your checks. Uh, here we have uh, the register, this uh, part, okay, of the, of the register the clx dot register which is divided or i divided it in colors to show you uh, the blocks um, of each one of them i can show you also the same register in um not this one but this one in the hardware manual okay so there is no difference between what i what there is in the book and what is in the hardware manual, okay? As you can see, bit zero is for detection between even bit planes and odd bit planes. Um, then bit one to bit four is between sprites and odd bit planes, and five to eight is between even bit planes and sprites. Then there is uh, Collision detection between sprites, which is from bit 9 to bit 14. As I said, 15 is not used. I am skipping certain things here that I should... Those that know this register, there are more to it than just what I said. I am skipping them intentionally because the book mentions them later. So also not to confuse you. But uh, please note, for example, bit 9... It's either sprite zero or sprite one, not both together, okay? That can have a collision detection with sprite two. So with sprite zero to sprite two or sprite one to sprite three. There is more to it than what I'm saying, but notice how it is word, worded there. Um, same for bits one to four and five to eight. That is, those are when you have dual playfield. When we have normal playfield, bits 5 to 8 are not used and only 1 to 4 are used. Um, however, the book is saying it within, um, within a dual playfield. Okay, so please bear in mind in which, in which context you are reading this register. If you have your playfield, it is as shown. If it is not, then it is only the lower uh, from bit 1 to bit 4, okay? And then 9 to 14. We will come to it later because there is more to it than what I'm, I'm actually saying. So... Notice also, okay, um, right now I'm, I'm highlighting this section of, uh, of the registers, okay? Um, notice also that the sprites are paired as always. So sprite 0 and sprite 1, sprite 2 and sprite 3, both of them are... So 0 and 1 is a couple, 2 and 3 is a couple, okay? Uh, he uses the word copia, which is couple, basically. So same... The hydrogen manual doesn't use couples or marriage, as I call them. They are married. <laughs> but um, keep that in mind.
that sprites in collision detection they are coupled clx con okay the control register okay is divided into three sections bit zero to bit five is where you specify the color that you want to collide with bit 6 to 11 is where you specify which bit planes you want enabled for collision detection okay and this can become very complex actually here so i'm giving you a hint here uh, that later on things can become complex because of this um, and then there is bit 12 to 15 which you enable sprite 1 for collision detection or 3 5 and 7 so by default you get the even ones to be in collision detection okay you can enable okay uh, the odd ones So, so let's talk about sprite to sprite collision detection, okay? It is obvious that you can only detect collision between sprite pairs, okay? As I said, they are coupled, not like the Commodore 64, where you can detect a collision detection between 0 and 1, on the Amiga, you cannot. Only between couples, you can do it. As I said, sprite are co are considered couples. Okay, um, it's it's a thing that you need uh, to get around it that to consider sprites as couples. You can detect sprites in the same. You can detect sprites in the same couple. You can't. Not you can. Sorry. You can't detect sprites in the same couple or between two couples if both even and odd sprites are enabled for collision. As I said, there is a, a bit where you enable also the this bit here where you enable these bits here where you enable also the um, odd sprites. Normally, they are off, so only even ones. But if you enable it. If you try to do collision detection between let's say sprite a couple one to couple two okay and you have uh, and you have both of them enabled so then how are you going to tell if it was sprite zero or sprite one that collided with sprite two it's impossible um, unless you do other checks um, uh, basically it's like doing the collision detection manually basically software programming by programming it In fact, um, so if the, in fact, he gives, I mean, I said it from the top of my head, but actually he gives such a, a scene. Okay. Um, so if there's a collision between sprite zero and sprite two, then bit nine is set on CLX dot. Okay. So just to show you, okay. Um, bit nine is set if there's a collision, okay, between, um, sprite zero which is couple one and sprite two if there's a collision between sprite one okay and sprite two bit nine is also set if we enable also the um the uh, odd sprites okay so you it, it's going to be difficult to detect which is which so I said it from the top of my head automatically, but there it is in my notes. And this is what he's saying. Actually, you can see he's mentioning couple one and couple two, etc, uh, etc. Et the collisions between even sprites always happen. OK, that's the default. OK, so sprite zero to sprite two, etc, etc, etc. The collisions between all sprites only happen if we want these to happen. So as I said, you only want 
to have collision detection between odd sprites if you enable that bit so only if we want them to happen the even ones always happen but the odd ones we need to enable them from those bits he's going to say what i just said in a minute to uh, a minute ago to enable odd sprites collision detection you need to set the relevant bit in clx con so another thing that uh, i need to say in this part okay you don't need to enable all odd bits you can enable only for sprite one for example for for sprite so you have zero and one that can do collision detection with some other uh, other sprite okay um it doesn't mean that you need to enable them all okay so you can select which one you can enable but still they are coupled this has as you can imagine advantages and disadvantages of course i say disadvantages but he said advantages and disadvantages <laughs> let's consider the couple the couples one and two and think that one and three are on so basically zero and one is on and two and three are on uh, actually he is saying sorry i just ran ahead run ahead so imagine couple one and couple two okay and we only have the even uh, sprites enabled okay which is the default the others are off okay in this case there is a collision between zero and two then bit nine is set okay If a collision occur between one and two, okay, or zero and, and three, or one and three, we can't know that there was a collision. Of course, we can only det detect a collision between um, uh, sprite zero and sprite two in this mode. If there's a collision between one and Two, we cannot tell and if there's a collision between one and three we can tell and if there's a collision between zero and three we cannot tell okay because we don't have the uh, odd sprites enabled now let's imagine that we enable the odd sprites okay In this case, the collision will be 0 and 2, or 1 and 2. We get, we, for both cases, we get bit 9 set. So, we cannot detect whether it was sprite 0 that collided with sprite 2, or sprite 1 that collided with by 2, with, that collided with, uh, sorry, that collided with sprite two so so it's it is not so clear okay how one can um, have collision detection unless you think only of sprites that you only have four that you can have collision detection with so I'm not saying that you need to use four, but to be honest, I would avoid all this hassle that they create. Um, I think it's too messy, in my opinion. So also, we can't detect um, collision detection between two and three and zero and three. 
we we cannot we cannot tell even if we enable the um the bit the even even uh, sorry odd bits odd sprites why i'm saying bits from this we can tell if it is sprite zero that color as i said or sprite one that collided with uh, one of the one or the others so this is what this paragraph is saying okay um i know it's a bit winded up uh, too much wording uh, but i hope it made sense in what i'm saying if we enable sprite one and sprite three okay then the situation is even worse so if we enable the odd sprites this situation gets even more complex to detect there is no way of telling which sprite collided with the with which with who um so for me okay um if i had to do some use sprite collision detection i will avoid having the um let's say the eve the odd ones enabled i would just use the even ones and detect between them for the uh, odd ones i will find other methods i mean there are methods i'm i'm not going to um there are methods of how to detect where if if you have actually collided if you read the x and y coordinate of a sprite and compare it to another one you can tell uh, from its size if you collide it you know if they overlap or not so you can do that and i think it's a better way in a way even though there is some programming behind it than this messy thing um but this is how the amiga sprites were implemented and this is just the start <laughs> so i do not want to discourage you from reusing sprites and i mean you can use sprites as much as you long but when it comes to collision detection it's a bit complex the rest is easy i mean multiplexing is very easy with with sprites um so i do not want to you know discourage anyone from using sprites it's just that you need to be careful and think a bit it's not as straightforward as the common risk is for when it comes to collision detection when it comes to multiplexing it is easier than the commodore 64 so you know they thought of they solved one problem and they created another one so yeah <laughs> you cannot you know make everyone happy okay so let's go to the amiga We have our first example. I'm going to assemble it and run it. And notice that we have a collision detection between the rocket and the plane. And you can assume, okay, that probably that is Sprite 0 and Sprite 2 that have collided with each other. Because if it was an odd one, it might not work. I believe the settings is 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 the default in this case so uh yeah i'm just going to run it again that is collision detection the first uh, part of it let's say um let's go to the book and this time to the exercises book and I will explain uh, the code that there is there. As always, we have the initial code, um, the code that um, we've been talking about uh, several times or mentioning several times, um, which is, you know, the first part is where we disable the Amiga OS, okay? And we take control of the hardware then we set the bit plane pointers okay and then we set the sprite pointers okay so 
Then we have the part where we make sure that we are compatible with um, with AGA. Then we have our three routines, which I will go to. One is to use to move the plane. One is to move the missile, and one is to ch is for checking the uh, collision detection. So these are the three routines. They are simple routines, nothing special, nothing to um, that you won't understand. And then we have the usual closure where we return back to the OS. Okay. So this is the routine that moves the plane. Okay. We just move. Uh, subtract one from h start okay of uh, the plane of sprite zero and so it is moving towards the left since we are subtracting one okay here when it uh, when uh, we arrive okay at bit zero when the plane arrives at bit zero okay it is not any more higher so then because this is branch if high uh, so if it is if it's haven't arrived um, at bit zero then it goes to here okay so it exits but if it arrives so it detects that it's in in its radar and in its zone then it fires up and it's updating the v start and v stop so that you know you need when you're moving an object vertical you need to update this v start and v stop of the item of the sprite so here we come to the collision detection this is the you know the label that indicates the, but the, this is the collision detection routine this part it's very easy look what we do we just read okay we just read the data register the ffoe the CLX dot, and we store it into the zero. Okay, we test because we are checking between sprite zero and sprite two. So we bit test. Okay, we check bit nine of the zero. Okay, if there's no collision, we exit. Okay, we return. We go down here. If there is, then you know they collide it. So we remove them from the screen and what are we doing we are just zeroing the pointers of the sprites and that is how you make them vanish from the screen to show that they have collided there could have been an anim anim an animation you know that is run and have like an explosion but this is not a game right now it's just to show collision detection and that is how um, fabio showed it to us <clears throat> here we have the sprite pointers the usual sprite pointers which we initialize for sprite 0 and sprite 2 okay here we have uh, the two bit planes enabled so this is you are enabling two bit planes for the image for the background image that we have where the, that you see in where there was orange uh, and of course we have the bit to, that is always on in BPL con zero. These are the colors of the sprite, and basically this is the sprite data. As you can see, this is the plane, I believe, data, and this is the missile data. Okay, yeah, this is the plane data, and this is the missile data. And here we have our special bytes that dictate. The, that are the control bytes for the um, for the sprite. Okay, um, I believe there's another example that I need to do or not? Yes, example W two. So I think I I finished this example. Uh, he is explaining the same thing that I just explained. See, this is the uh, collision detection routine which we have I have explained, and yeah, we have uh, we have done uh, 
example 7w1. Now we're going to see example 7w2. Okay, so let's go to the Amiga. This is a collision detection between sprites that are odd, not even. Okay, which I will explain in a minute. But first, let's see the example. So let's go to the Amiga. Now, you will you saw, okay, that actually we were not able to detect collision detection between the first sprite, which is sprite three, uh, sorry, sprite one, and um, and the plane. It just goes through it, okay. That is because we are not able to s to know who collided with who okay um you also saw that this pride had some issues it goes out of the screen and then comes back and it's a long tail but that is because the screen is not taking care uh, we are in palm mode and we are not taking care of the um of of the lower part of the screen so it but it doesn't make a difference the important thing is that we have collision detection so if you're just wondering if this is a bug, it's not a bug. It, it's useless complicating the code to have um, to have something neat in a way when we are just testing collision detection. Okay. So we go to the book. And I'll explain this example. Okay, so he's saying this is, um, we will see collision detection between odd sprites. There are two missiles to hit the plane, but one of the missiles is an odd sprite. Okay, that's what he's saying. We will see that the program as it is is not functional yes that i forgot to mention as it is it's not functional because of course the uh, odd sprite is not detected there's a way of fixing it which we will go through but as it is it's not uh, functional nothing changes okay uh, still the same code, but instead of initializing two sprites, we are initializing three because we have two missiles. Instead of moving the plane and one missile, we are moving the plane and two missiles and then the collision detection. So this is the routine that moves the plane like before. Okay, this is the routine that moves uh, one of the missiles, Okay, which is sprite two. And this is the routine that moves sprite three. Okay, so we have collision detection for uh, the odd sprites. However, as we are, we are only detecting collision detection between uh, the even sprites, which is sprite two. And as you saw, it only collides with knows that there was a collision between sprite um, zero and sprite two but not between sprite uh, zero and uh, sprite three. We can invert that, but there are exceptions which I will come in a minute. And here you are seeing that it's the same routine. We're testing bit nine to see if there was a collision detection. And if there was, we cleared the sprite pointers, but we're clearing instead of um one sprite we're clearing more than one i believe 
that there is that's all that there is for oh no actually sorry um i forgot that we corrected to check to check for collision of sprite 3 we need to enable it yeah we need to enable it so if we want sprite 3 to collide with the plane the, the plane then we need to enable it if we enable it as you saw here we are enabling um this the sprite to collide with um sprite number three okay so if i go to the hardware manual and i show the other table sorry hound dog i'm going to stick to this um i think it's easier for me because i just need to switch pages between the book and and the hardware manual yesterday i was not doing this very intelligently but today I can because I, I'm experienced after the errors of like that I did yesterday. Uh, so we enabled uh, Sprite 3. Okay, so this bit. So we should see bit 13 on. Okay, so it should be bit 13 as you see. Okay, because if, if 13, 14, 15. Okay, there are from 0 to uh, 15 so that is bit 13 since we enabled um, bit uh, the odd sprite which is sprite number 3 which is bit um, 13 as I said I can show you what's going to happen now so let's go to the Amiga which is example number 7w3 so as you saw there was a collision between sprite 3 and sprite 0 but we still have the fact that sprite uh, uh, 2 continued uh, to move okay it continued to move around that is because we cannot really um, it's either one or the other uh, and we cannot really tell uh, which is which and of course the program is not catering for that but just to show you that hey we switch from colliding with sprite 2 and we are colliding with sprite 3 now that's all so if i assemble it again sorry and run it that is sprite 3 and sprite 2 is going to launch but there's nothing to hit and it misses so it looks better let's put it this way we go back to the book and uh, we jump to here so actually this part is telling me to run example 7w4 what i did here is i changed the value in this sprite from a6 to b6 and that means the position actually let me show it to you so let's go to the amiga So the first missile misses, okay? So it starts at a different position and it launches at a different position. So it misses and because it misses, then Sprite 2 collides with uh, Sprite uh, with the plane, okay? But not Sprite 3. As I said, ignore the green line, consider it as a flame coming out from the rocket. <laughs> when it's going up but that's a bug in a way but we don't care about that let's return back to the book okay now i got it right so 
all we did is we delayed or started it earlier the way when the missile launches off uh, that's that's all we did we didn't uh, nothing else just to show how we missed from one sprite to the other and how we detected the collision how we switched from one uh, sprite 3 to um sprite to sprite 2 in terms of collision detection okay so now we need to return back to the book the theory book not the examples book and we uh, start um, talking about uh, collision detection within between uh, play fields let's put it this way so first of all let me see if i skipped anything uh, here okay so no i i said it doesn't work but we needed to modify it so we are fine with that one um now let's talk about collisions bit with play fields okay we can make sprites collide with a specific color okay so let's say you had uh, red on the screen if you have a plane and it collides with the color red then it means that um, it has entered a zone which it should have not and then of course something happens so we have a collision detection now between uh, the um, plane and the color not another sprite just to give an example okay it's it's not written in the book it's something that came to my mind right now so we can make sprites to collide with a specific color even in this mode these sprites are coupled okay so you always detect collision detection between two uh, between a coupled sprite and a bit plane so even in this mode okay uh, when I'm talking to sprites colliding with uh, bit planes, um, the sprites are coupled. Okay, so zero and one are together, two and three are together, etc., etc., etc. Here is how we do it. Okay, um, if we have a normal screen, okay, as I said, a normal in a normal screen, we collide okay with bit one to bit four okay as you can see they are paired and imagine the word odd um falls down okay and this is how we collide with um normal a normal screen so when we don't have dual play field only bits one to four are used and that's how we can detect um, a color uh, when we collide with a color basically the color of course is specified we will come for it but i'm i'm saying it right now with this with this register with the control register uh, clx con where you specify the color here from 0 to 5 there is more to it in here okay also but for now just consider that you can collide with one color that you specify between zero and five okay of course you also need to enable which bit planes you want to collide so if you have a five bit plane you enable um, the first five six to ten if you have a six bit plane you enable six to eleven uh, or if you have four bit plane 16 color six to nine it depends what you are um, using. So, as I said, bit one to four indicate a collision between a sprite pair and the color, and bits five to eight are not used on a normal screen on in a normal screen mode. So that is what he's saying in that paragraph. For your play field, we use as per table, okay? 
so if we have dual play field enabled okay then clx clx dot will return depending with with which bit uh, play field we collide it okay we'll return either a value here if bit if play field one collide it with sprite zero then bit one will be on if play field one play field two collided with sprite zero then bit five will be on okay so this is remember you need to read okay um this register and depending on which bit from which set is set okay uh, we um, can decide or say um, what uh, our collision is I mean how with what we collide it so in dual play field okay remember that when you read clx dot you need to check whether it was bit plane a bit a play field one or play field two that we collided with and depending on those bits that um, we um, get set okay um let's continue uh, as i said in the part that that's coming is the part that is a bit uh, complex which i will explain and i will explain again next week um, so so as you saw okay we were saying that sprites can collide with a color okay and Colliding with a color, okay, which is in a normal screen, is quite easy, okay? If we want to collide, okay, remember, in a normal screen, we only use these four bits, one to four, to collide. When we read the register, we only get a collision detection on these four bits. And then here, we specify the color, okay? And here we specify with the bit planes that we need. For now, forget the bit planes, okay? Imagine that they are all enabled, okay? Um, just assume that for now. However, let's say we want to um, have a collision detection with color number three, okay? And let's say color number three is, um, is red, okay? So color number three is... is we have color number three with zero and uh, with bit zero being set and bit one being set. So basically we set this bit, bit one, bit bit zero. And now we have told the Amiga that in a normal screen, we are colliding with, um, we need to detect collision detection with color number three. And that's basically it. Um, and we read. I mean, there is an example later on. That's uh, in a normal screen. However, in a in dual play field, things are a bit more complex. Okay, and so let's go to my whiteboard and I'm going to explain something. Okay, let me see if I should do it like this or not. Um, no, I prefer, no, I prefer going back to the book. No, 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 because I'm going to confuse you. We will get back to that in a minute. So, if we had dual play field, okay. So, in dual play field, we can only have eight colors, right? So, um, when we uh, have collision detection in dual play field, okay, um, actually, actually, forget dual play field. Let's continue with, let's continue with the normal um, screen 
that I said we only use bits 1 to bits 4. So, in uh, we said that um, we said that in CLX con, okay, we this is where we specify the color, okay. This is where we specify the bit planes, and this is where we enable the odd sprites. So, if we want. Okay, remember we're having a normal screen right now. If we want to enable a color, okay, we set the bits here. And actually, he's going to show us an example, okay, here. Okay, let's say, for example, suppose we have a screen that is 16 colors, okay, and we are not interested in the collision with odd sprites, so we have the default even sprites on and we want to detect uh, collision detection between the even sprites and the bit plane with some kind of color if you want to detect a collision with a sprites and the background say color number 13 okay we write this and this is what we do in clx con so we are doing so this is the register okay and this is the bits that we write okay now let's consider okay let let's ignore the first uh, six bits okay let's ignore them for now if we have four bit planes okay then we need to enable four bit planes which is this part okay where we have one 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 okay if that is for bit planes and that is bit six to bit nine so if we go to the uh, here we say bit six to bit nine in uh, i mean we are talking about clx con now so bit six to bit bit nine we have enabled the four bit planes okay to have collision detection on it um, uh, from bit six to bit nine so that is on Okay, so far it's easy. Okay, we have four bit planes and we have enabled collision detection for them. Now, suppose we have, as he said, color 13. Okay, so now we are talking about the first six bits. So, how do you specify 13? It's 8 plus 4, which is 12, plus 1. So, 1, 1, or 1. Okay. That's the number 13. So we specify, okay, uh, the number 13 in CLX con, okay? So one, in b so bit zero is a one, bit one is a zero, bit two is a one, bit three is a one, and four and five are zero. So we have as told the Amiga, okay, we want collision detection between color 13 and uh, and sprite um, one of the paired sprites okay so this is how uh, we specify which which with what we want to collide okay i think this is easy so far to understand okay you have under you know how to collide with when you have a normal screen uh, with a particular color. Please bear with me. I'm going to do the examples where I arrive later on of this. And that's why next week I will repeat this part. And the reason why is the example of this is coming at a later stage. You would have forgotten within one week what we've done here. So I will repeat it. Um, and also this is this part is not that difficult, but the part that comes after this one is 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 not easy um to um, um remember it especially after one week so we now understand how to specify collision detection between a color and a sprite okay so far so good now 
with the same logic okay we have the even sprites enabled as always the default we have the odd sprites disabled and now we have the dual play field screen enabled so we have to play fields okay how do you specify the color okay because specifying color number 13 for uh, a normal screen was easy easy it was between z on bit zero to bit five but color uh, in dual play field it's not the same so what do you do okay so what you have to do is this okay so first of all okay notice that bit uh, six okay here okay we have uh, six bit planes enabled because we have dual play field okay so remember each play field can have a maximum of three bit planes and here we are saying that our play fields has got um we are detecting collision detection which with all bit planes of um, of dual play field so we are doing detection with the odd bit planes and we're doing detection with the even bit planes and i'm going to remind you of how this is set up so these six registers okay are the bit planes that are used not uh, not are the bit planes but are the register the bits that are going to tell to we're going to enable to tell uh, the amiga which bit planes we want to call to use for collision detection okay since we have six bit planes okay imagine that our dual play field screen is three pl bit planes with three bit planes we enable them all okay in future you're going to see that you don't need to enable them on but that's when the complexities come in uh, for now if we have six bit planes we enable six bit planes if we have five bit planes we enable five bit planes etc 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 okay it's always like that for now so we enabled these uh, six bit planes we return i'm going to return back to the book but now we need to specify the color for the bit planes okay how does it how does it do it and as you saw in the amiga hardware manual okay i'm just going we have bits zero to five which makes which gives us six bits okay to specify uh, the colors okay however because we have dual play field okay so bit zero is bit plane one bit one is bit plane two etc 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 so zero two and four are the uh sorry are the even bit planes okay while bit one three and five are the um odd bit planes okay so in every bit plane has got uh eight colors so from zero to seven so we specify okay by using these bits okay and i'm just going to show you how we do it so now it is time to come to the tablet so to my whiteboard this is what i drew yesterday okay so on the um so here okay we have the bits okay zero to five okay here okay we have a number that we entered okay that there is in the book okay in the in the book there is zero one 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 zero one okay so what does this number really mean okay now remember that bit zero is for play field two bit one is for play field one and it continues like that okay bit two is for play field two bit three is for play field one bit four is for play field two bit five is for play field one so 
if we have okay if we have zero remember we are talking about play field two now if we have zero one zero what is what color are we detecting with so here okay um we have the bits of bp B, uh, clx con okay the control register for the sprites so and it is from bit zero to bit five okay here is what we have uh, how we set these bits okay zero one 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 zero one however as i said to you bit zero is play field two bit one is play field one bit two is play field two bit three is play field one bit four is play field two bit five is play field one okay so if we have if we take for play field two okay these three okay so bit zero bit uh, two and bit four we get the o one o okay so as you can see o one o is two so play field two is having collision detection with color index number two. For play field one, okay, we take. Uh, I was saying that we did play field two, but if we want to do play field one, then we take the um, we take the one, okay, which is a one, the three, which is a a one, and the five, which is a one, okay. So, if you take the values of there, that means play field one is we have three bits which are on. That means we have a color number seven. Okay. So right now, okay, ignore this part. Okay, this this these numbers here. Okay. So right now, the what is in the book? Okay, is saying that we are detecting collision detection with color number two, and uh, with color number seven. Now, if you want to change the colors, let's say playfield 2 is 100, zero, zero, which is 4, okay? Then for playfield 2, um, as you can see, um, I believe it's this one, uh, it's the last one, um, it's zero, zero, 001, okay? So, because you start reading binary from here, no? So it's zero, zero, 001 that is a color number four play field one we have five and of course i put 101 so one one zero one or the opposite one zero one here we have another um example okay um so if we have zero one zero okay which is what we had here that is number two and if we have one 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 what we had here uh that is number seven so basically what i did i i wrote what there was in the book and then i colored them okay between black and green to indicate which one is playfield one and which one is playfield two and then i wrote them here so this is how you specify color for when you have dual play field. Um, okay, I need to switch back to the book actually. Okay, so in this paragraph, okay, the gray paragraph, he was saying in the case of dual play field, okay, so now I am in a way translating what he said, but in a shorter version, okay. Um, in this case, in the case of dual play field, the same situation applies, but uh, activating all bit planes by activating all bit planes, it means it will collide with uh, color two. With, with two colors okay and not with one because we have two bit planes so we if we specify the color for both 
a bit planes, then we are colliding with two colors, depending which um, play field we are uh, colliding with. We want to collide with. If we have two fields uh, of three bit planes, of course, you are play field. So um, each of them has got eight colors, and we uh, and we say we select color number seven for play field one and color number two for play field two, and then that combination gives us these bits of how to write it between z bit zero to bit uh, five. Uh, and as I said, each interleave one is the bit for the relative, for the related uh, bit um, play field. Remember, they are called play fields, not bit planes. Um, a play fields is a group of bit planes, okay? So, here he's explaining how seven was combined here, which I already showed you through the um, uh, on the tablet on, the, on my whiteboard. How we combine seven, which is one, one, one. So bit zero, bit two, and bit uh, four. And how two was written up here, okay, which is zero, one, and zero, okay because this is bit, say, two of the second play field. So, uh, please note, okay, that the enabled bit in CLX dot is different for play field one and play field two. What does he mean by that? It's in red, so this is quite uh, an important uh, thing. What does he mean by that? So if I jump to the uh, registers, okay, remember we only have two. For play field one, okay, we have these four bits. For play field two, we have these four bits, okay? So for the number seven, okay, we are. If somebody collides with number seven, we get the bit enabled in of the sprite in one of these will be enabled. If somebody collides with uh, color number two because it's uh, playfield number two, then one of these sprites will be uh, one of these bits will be enabled will be one. Okay, that's how it works. This is quite, uh, this is where someone might get uh, lost, to be honest, uh, where, when you read the bit, where, in which bit uh, play field we are, okay? As you can see in the table, a collision of sprite zero with play field one sets the bit one, okay? A collision of, sp of spread zero with playfield two, okay? Sets the bit five on. So what he's saying is, if we are colliding with spread zero, so spread zero collides with the color, then in bit plane, in playfield one, we get, we get uh, the first bit on, okay? Uh, so bit one in if we are in playfield two and we collided sprite zero collided with the with the color that we indicated, then bit five is on. Okay. So that is um, I hope that is clear enough. As I said, I will repeat this because the example of this comes at a later stage in the book, which I believe it is, actually this one is the X1, so we are quite far away from it to do it. It's because there are other things that you need to know. Um, as always, things are built up um, one step at a time, no? so we, I'm always building on what, you had, what I had just said. It's possible, okay, so, and actually, because this 
I'm going to read this. Uh, I'm going to say what he's saying in this paragraph, but I'm not going to explain the technicali technicalities of it because you will really get confused. Um, and it's better if I repeat it again next uh, next week. So what he's saying here, it is possible to have a sprite um, collision detection test for a collision, okay, with more than one color. So basically, before we were saying that if we want sprite to collide with one color, okay, let's say we said color number two, we just specify color number two, and we get collision detection with sprite with color number two. However, you can also specify multiple colors, but there's a trick to it, or let's say a way of specifying it, that um, it is a bit um, confusing. And I think for today, you have already um, too many things in the head. So this is where I stopped yesterday. It's I stopped in the same paragraph, but Next week I will cont I will repeat this the gray part, okay? Because I'm going to add something of what you need to do here. Um, it's quite tricky. We're going to talk about bit six to bit uh, eleven, and it's going to be quite tricky how you can specify multiple colors. But it's a very very powerful thing. Okay, before I was saying that I do not like the way sprite collision detection is is done. Okay, sprites between sprites, but sprites with playfield, the way it is done is very intelligent. Um, it's just that you need to get your head around it. Guys, thank you very much. Uh, I hope to see you next week. It's quite... Um, I know it was quite a heavy topic, uh, but uh, next week we should be able to finish chapter number seven, um, which is finishing collision detection. And basically we've done sprites. So thank you very much. See you next week. See you. Bye bye.